As I studied more geometry, I came across Buckminster Fuller that had done much work in describing complex geometry relative to our reality. And Buckminster Fuller came to conclude that the fundamental blueprint of the universe was what he called an isotropic vector metric or a four frequency isotropic vector metric. There is 20 tetrahedron in the four frequency isotropic vector metric. 10 on the bottom, six in the middle, three on the third floor and one on top. And it makes a larger tetrahedron when it's put together. What I was interested in was the negative space. I wanted to know what's in between the tetrahedrons. When you put tetrahedrons edge to edge or edge bounded, you get octahedrons in between. Octahedrons are pyramids base to base. Emphasis on the word pyramid. When I looked at the negative space, I found that there was another set of tetrahedron that was like the negative negative space. And those tetrahedrons in the middle were reversed and rotated 180 degrees. I didn't know what they were doing there. It was like there was a symmetry in the isotropic vector metric. With the word isotropic, you would expect no asymmetry. I was looking for perfect equilibrium, so this was not sac satisfactory to me. I had to figure out what these other tetrahedrons were doing there. I realized that one isotropic vector metric could not be alone. It had to be polarized. And so I stacked two on top of each other. However, now I had another problem. The two on top of each other didn't make a sphere, it made an egg. And the concept I had developed was that the tetrahedrons produce the sphere that divides the boundary from infinitely large to infinitely small. So I didn't know what to do. It was like an egg and a chicken problem. I uh, thought about it for weeks, eventually realizing that I had to push one into the other. I didn't want to distort the geometry of the tetrahedron, but when I actually got the two so that they would produce a perfect sphere, I realized what these other negative negative space were for. In fact, the one metric was awaiting its better half. It was not actually complete until the reverse metric was inserted into it. And when it was, all of a sudden, these other spaces were there to accept the reverse tetrahedron. Like one tetrahedron male metric was waiting for its counterpart. It was remarkable. It was the polarities coming together to produce the perfect sphere. And I looked at what geometry was produced in the middle. No tetrahedrons were distorted. And the resulting geometry in the middle is a cube octahedron. Why is a cube octahedron important? Because Buckminster Fuller coined it the vector equilibrium. It's the only geometry in perfect equilibrium in all vectorial possibility. And that was exactly what I was looking for. The polarities coming together to produce singularity, to produce perfect equilibrium at its center. I thought, this must be the geometry of the vacuum.